Hi everyone, thank you guys for joining us. Um, welcome to our Glamorous live show. We're live right now on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm Aisha and I'm one of the content creators at Glamorous. Um, so like I said, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, initially, we were going to do a nutrition based live today, um, but we had a last minute change. So we're going to do that tomorrow. So you can join us for some um, nutrition based questions and questions on how to boost your immunity tomorrow. But for today, what we're going to be talking about is DIY skincare products. And I know that this is a topic that all of you guys love so much. Um, and we love making these videos for you and sharing this information with you as well. Um, and we thought that talking about DIY skincare today and especially during this time, during the quarantine was super important because um, a lot of people are running out of skincare products. I personally ran out of toner and it's not an essential by any means. So I haven't been um, able to get another one and instead I've been using DIY and natural um, alternatives as a toner instead so we thought this might be a helpful live for all of you and I'm going to talk about how you can use different ingredients as every single step of your skincare routine and I'm going to be answering your questions along the way as well. I see we already have a ton of questions before the live show has even started. So that's really great. But make sure you continue to put your questions in and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible. So like I said, we're going to be talking about DIY skincare. Um, and just before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about skincare in general and skincare routines. So obviously there are many steps to skincare. You can do three step routine, which is CTM or cleanse, tone and moisturize, or you can go all out and do the 10 step Korean skincare routine. If you have a ton of time um, and you're interested in trying it out and seeing how it works for your skin. So you can try three steps, 10 steps or anywhere in between. So um, I'm, today I'm going to be talking about not three, but maybe four or five of the most important steps that you shouldn't be skipping out on. And those are cleansing, toning, um, moisturizing, and we're going to talk a little bit about exfoliating as well. Um, as a general rule, you should follow the cleanse, tone, moisturize routine every day, twice a day. So you start with it in the morning. And then you do it again at night. So in the morning, it's kind of cleansing your skin of any oils and stuff that I've collected overnight. And at night, it's cleansing your face of dirt and whatever's collected on it throughout the day. Exfoliating is something that you can do twice a week. Um, and if you have sensitive skin, maybe once a week. And it's going to get rid of the dead skin cells that build up um, over the week and over time. So I hope that clears up a little bit about skincare routines because I know we get a lot of questions about it. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to be talking to you about, the first DIY skincare product I'm going to be talking to you about is cleansers. Um, before we get into that, I want to take a couple of questions from you guys and then I'll continue talking about cleansers. So I think we'll try to take um, a question right now. So we have a question from Snigdha Chakravarti and she says she has oily acne skin. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what your question is, Snigdha, but if I also have oily uh, skin, it's not too acne prone, but I do tend to get acne sometimes. Um, for this, you can try um, using products from Neutrogena or Cetaphil. What you want to do is you want to look out for products that don't have oils in them and also don't have too many soaps in them or parabens you want to look for things that are dermat uh, dermat tested and that aren't going to be too harsh on your skin or deposit any oils that are going to clog your skin even more so those are some tips that i can share with you um for someone who has oily acne prone skin i hope that helps and i wasn't sure what your question is but i hope that answered it uh, let's take another question before I talk about cleansers. So this one is from Suhani on YouTube and she says she has open pores and blackheads on the nose. So uh, there is a common misconception about pores. Um, everyone has pores, obviously. Everyone has open pores as well because it is how your skin functions. But some people might have slightly bigger pores than other people. I do tend to have slightly bigger pores. 
Um, so when you have bigger pores, it looks like you your skin is kind of getting clogged and you tend to have more blackheads because they clog those pores more easily since they're bigger. So what you can do is use um, a pore tightening DIY if you want. I'm going to be talking about it later in the toners. You can try apple cider vinegar. It's really going to tighten up all your pores and it's going to also get rid of blackheads at the same time. So you're beating both problems with just one ingredient and one product. And we do have a, a video on a blackhead removal mask as well that we'll make sure to share with you in the comments in a little while. So I hope that answers your question. Um, so that being said, I'm going to start talking about DIY cleansers for your face type, for your skin type. Um, so if you've run out of cleanser, I'll give you a few options that you can try right now. Um, so there are two types of cleansers that you can use. The first type is oil cleansers. And I'm not sure if you guys have heard a lot about these, but what oil cleansers will do will actually, they're going to dissolve the dirt and oil on your face. So if you have dirt and oil-based um, kind of uh, bacteria or anything on your face, the oil that you're cleaning it with is going to dissolve that oil-based dirt. So if you try to wash it off with water, it might not come off as well. So what you can do is use an oil-based cleanser and an oil-based cleanser is great for taking off makeup as well if you don't want to use a store-bought makeup remover. So um, I have a few options for you guys. Um, and so I have all of these things that I'm going to talk about are super easy to find even during the quarantine and the lockdown. I guarantee that all of you have at least one of these in your house. Um, so you can easily use them. And I will tell you which is best for each skin type, but you don't have to stick to that. You can kind of try out different ones. So for oil cleansers, I have one right here. It's just olive oil. I took this from my kitchen. Um, it's just regular olive oil. Um, you can use olive oil if you have combination skin. Uh, you can also use almond oil if you have dry skin and you can use jojoba oil if you have oily skin. Now, I know jojoba oil might not be the easiest thing to buy right now. If you already have it, then great. But if not, you can try one of these other two oils. All you need to do is take your oil, soak it onto a cotton pad, and then you can just use it on your face as you would use a makeup remover and kind of just like use it in circular motions around your face. What you don't want to use is coconut oil because it's going to clog your pores. Um, so you want to skip it unless you know for a fact that coconut oil does not make you break out and it's very comfortable on your skin. That's the only time you should use coconut oil. But I prefer not to suggest it to people um, because sometimes it does cause breakouts and skin irritation and clog your pores. So you end up with worse skin than before. Um, so those are the oil-based cleansers. I think I'll take a couple more questions if I talk to you about some more cleansers. Let's see what questions we're getting in. Um, so this question is from Nimisha Shah and she said, can we get rid of tanning please? So um, I'm sure if you guys have watched our live shows with Dr. Bindu, you'll hear her say prevention is better than cure. Um, I'm sure if she was watching right now, she'd be very happy that we're still sharing that that she says. Um, so what you can make sure to always do is always wear your sunscreen. Even right now, when you're at home, you're not going outside. There's still sun rays and UV rays coming into your house and still affecting your skin and ultimately damaging it over time. So you should still be using a sunscreen even if you're indoors. Now, if you're already suntanned, there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, you can make a mixture of turmeric, gram flour, and milk, uh, which is haldi, besan, and milk, and mix it together and apply it as a paste to areas that might get tanned more easily or that are tanned a little more, especially around your knees and elbows, maybe even your neck. And leave it for maybe 10 minutes or so and then wash it off. And you should see some results, but you might have to use it regularly as well. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, let's take another question. This one is from Manju Mandal, who says how to reduce dark circles. So again, a question we get really, really often, Manju. Um, 
So I actually have something here that I was going to talk about later, but you can try it out for dark circles as well. Um, these are tea bags. It's green tea. And the caffeine in tea is actually really good for debuffing your eyes. So what you can do is soak this in hot water and then put it in the fridge for five to 10 minutes and make it cold and then just apply it on top of your eyes. You can kind of lie back, relax and keep it on your eyes for five to 10 minutes. And it's going to help get rid of a little bit of those dark circles and help reduce puffiness as well. Um, again, we have a ton of videos about dark circles that you can definitely check out with so many different uh, remedies that you can try and see which one works best for you. Um, just quickly, another DIY that I really enjoy for dark circles is to just apply some almond oil with a little bit of vitamin E oil and a little bit of aloe vera. Just mix it together and apply it to your under eyes before you sleep and then you can leave it on overnight. And if you use this regularly, it's one of the few things that really, really, really does work. So definitely give it a try and let us know how it worked for you. Um, so let's take one more question before I talk about our other types of cleansers. So this one is from Shadi. Shadi, I guess that's your YouTube name. Um, and she's asking which mask is better for oily skin. So again, like I said, I have oily skin. And my favorite type of mask for oily skin, especially acne prone oily skin, is a clay mask. So any type of clay, um, you can get a store-bought clay mask or you can just mix some Multani Mitti or any type of clay um, that is obviously safe to use on the skin with milk, water or apple cider vinegar. Mix it into a thick paste and apply it onto your face for about 10 minutes till it dries off and it's dry so that um, it's not coming off on your fingers when you check it. And then just you can wash it off or wipe it off with a damp cloth. And if you do this once a week, it will definitely help your skin because the clay is going to kind of suck out all those oils and impurities and help your skin out a lot. Um, so now I want to talk about the next few cleansers. And these are regular cleansers. So these would replace your face wash or whatever soaps you're using on your face. And you can give these a try. Um, so the first one is, again, I'm sure something everyone has at home it's just honey again i just got this from my kitchen uh so i'm sure a lot of people have honey at home and you only need very very small amounts of this so you're not wasting a lot of product you're not wasting something that you would normally be eating um you need very little of this um so you just need to take a drop of honey and mix it with some hot water and just massage it onto your face as if it was a face wash and then you can wash it off and that's all you need to do it works great as a cleanser um this works for normal dry combination skin if you have oily skin um you can try taking a little bit of gram flour which is basin and a little bit of multani mitti and mixing it together with some water and using that as a face wash instead if you don't have multani mitti you can use just the gram flour basin and apply it to your face and it's again going to get rid of those extra oils and it's also going to provide very gentle exfoliation to get rid of any dead skin cells because oilier skin does tend to build up a little extra of the dead skin cells and needs a little extra exfoliation. So you can give these a try. Um, we also have a video that we put together a while ago on an all natural CTM routine for oily and dry skin. So we'll make sure to share that with you so you can check that out as well if you want a slightly more detailed version of DIY skincare products for this whole CTM routine. So those are the cleansers. Um, before I talk about the next product, which is exfoliators, I'll answer a few more questions with everyone. So let's see what questions we're getting in. So this one is from Prathna Sridhar and she said, can you suggest skincare products for combination skin like oily and dry skin? Um, yes. So again, we do have a range of videos that you can check out that exp like talks about every single product for every single skin type. Um, but just off the top of my head for combination skin, you want to look out for products that aren't going to be too creamy or oily because they're going to make the oilier parts of your face too oily and maybe break out um, but you don't want something that's going to dry out your face either because you might have slightly dry skin around your cheeks 
so um, I'll just recommend a few products for you for combination skin for a face wash you can try Cetaphil's daily cleanser it's a really great cleanser for all skin types and it's really gentle on your skin so you can definitely give that a try um, for a toner there's the lotus basil tone cucumber and basil toner um, again it's great for combination skin because it's hydrating but um, doesn't make you feel greasy and oily and then finally for a moisturizer you can try Neutrogena's uh, oil free moisturizer for combination skin so they actually have a moisturizer that's perfect for combination skin it's sold specially for people with combination skin so you can definitely give that a try um, let's get another question so this is from Dr. Shobha Rani who says how to brighten your face and get rid of acne so again there's a ton of different ways to do this um, you can if you want to brighten your face you might want to use some um, chemically exfoliating products or DIYs so what happens is when your face is dull it usually need it might have a little bit of pigmentation so what you can try is vitamin c based products there are some from saint botanica and from body shop that you can try and you can also try toners or moisturizers that have an active acid in them so this could be glycolic acid or retinol these acids are going to kind of chemically exfoliate your skin so you're not rubbing away dead skin but it's going to chemically uh, dissolve away those dead skin cells and leave you with like a new fresh brighter layer of skin um, this will help with acne as well and if you're looking for a DIY mask something that you can try out is papaya or a pineapple based mask um, these are both great products for brightening your face and for dull skin because they both have enzymes that help dissolve these dead skin cells naturally so it's going to do what glycolic acid or retinol will do but without any added chemicals um, you just will want to mix it with something like yogurt or honey and apply it to your face for about 10 to 15 minutes once a week and then wash it off and you will definitely have brighter skin after you try it um, so let's take one more question before I talk about exfoliation so this one is from Briala James and she said is there a remedy for pigmentation so again like I said earlier pigmentation dullness they all uh, come from similar things uh, pigmentation again I would suggest using a vitamin C based product um, it's vitamin C is gonna help reduce pigmentation as I'm sure you guys know um, lemon is great for reducing pigmentation so you can try vitamin C based products or you can try some DIYs that have lemon in them but when you're doing a DIY with lemon you want to make sure that you're mixing it with much gentler ingredients so it's not too harsh and it's not going to burn your skin so if you are using lemon you want to try mixing it with um, honey and yogurt and again things that you probably definitely have at home and mixing it together again applying it for about 10 minutes and washing it off and it's going to help with that pigmentation and another thing that you can try is something that I'm going to talk about right now which is exfoliation so if you have pigmentation the chances are you have these dead skin cells that need to be exfoliated away so uh, you should try exfoliation either with an exfoliating scrub or with a natural product or with just a towel so I have a few options for natural exfoliators here the first one is very simple it's just a plain towel you want to make sure it's not too rough it should be a little soft you just can dampen this under the tap uh, with warm water and just use it in kind of circular motions around your face especially in areas that you have extra dead skin build up like around your mouth and around the corners of your nose as well maybe the middle of your forehead and under your jawline so you just want to kind of gently go in circles and scrub around your face you will actually be able to feel it once you're done you'll be able to feel your skin smoother you will have that squeaky clean feeling um, so this is a great thing to try you don't need anything for it you just need a towel um, we have a few more options again for exfoliating like I said we're sure that every single one of you have at least one of these in your house so whichever one you have you can give it a try 
Um, so one was a damp towel. The second one is oatmeal. Um, just take some dry oatmeal flakes. You can mix it with a little bit of warm water or a few drops of milk and take it and just scrub your face with it. It has really gentle grains, so it's not going to scrape or scratch your face and it's going to kind of nourish your skin as well. So you can definitely give that a try. Um, a few other options are sugar. I have a little bit of brown sugar here for you guys. Um, when I'm using sugar to exfoliate, I prefer to use brown sugar than white sugar because the grains are a little softer and smaller. White sugar grains tend to be a little more harsh on your skin. So if you're exfoliating on your body, you can use white sugar, but on your face, I would splurge a little bit and go for brown sugar. Um, again, just take it, put some water in it, make it into a paste, and then scrub your face in circular motions with it. And the last thing that you can use for exfoliation is coffee. Again, something I just had at home. Um, however, when you're using coffee, you want to make sure that it's very, very finely ground coffee. If you have thick grains of coffee, it might scratch you. So what you can do is actually use a sieve and kind of strain out this coffee and use the finer particles as an exfoliator. This is great for sensitive skin and dull skin because it's going to be quite gentle, but at the same time, it's going to, uh, the caffeine in the coffee is going to brighten up your skin and give your skin a really nice glow. So you can definitely give that a try as well. Um, I'm going to take a few more questions now. Let's see what questions we're getting in. Um, so this one is from Neha Anwar, who says, some effective home remedies for dark circles and pigmentation around the eyes. So again, I had just suggested earlier, there's quite a few things you can do for dark circles. Um, I had suggested you can try um, mixing vitamin E oil, almond oil, and some aloe vera gel and applying it as kind of an under eye mask uh, before you sleep and you can keep it on overnight and it'll definitely make a difference. Another thing you can try again is coffee. If you mix a little bit of coffee and yogurt and put it on as an under eye mask, it's going to work amazingly for you. And if you're looking for a product and you're not into DIYs, something that you can try is the Vadi um, almond oil under eye cream, I believe it's called. It's very, very affordable, and I've heard a lot of great things about it. it. has a lot of great reviews, so you can definitely try that one as well. So let's see what other questions are getting in. So this one is from YouTube again, and they're asking how to get smooth skin on hands. So this is a question that we're getting really, really often, especially because people are washing their hands a lot more and using hand sanitizers a lot more as well. So what you want to do is uh, first to start with, if you're someone who has to do a lot of chores at home or you have to wash a lot of dishes, um, if it's possible to go out and buy some, I would suggest getting some gloves, some reusable dishwashing gloves. It might be a little uncomfortable to use at first, but it's going to change your life. It's going to change the skin on your hands. Um, and it'll make it much softer over time. It'll prevent it from getting rough and hard. So you can definitely give that a try. But as for products and uh, things that you can put on your skin is you can definitely try using a hand cream. You should use it as often as you need. Um, it's not like on your face where you shouldn't use a moisturizer too often. Uh, you can use a hand cream as often as you need to to get your skin to be soft and hydrated. If you feel like you've put on a hand cream and half an hour later, your hand is still feeling dry and itchy, you can put on some more hand cream and really saturate your skin. You don't even have to get like a fancy, um, expensive hand cream. You can just put on Vaseline. Um, and you know how sometime in the parlors, they put on Vaseline or some wax on your feet and then wrap it in cling wrap. If you do have time for a little bit of a spa day at home, you can do a similar thing for your hands. You can put Vaseline on your hands till it's like saturated and moisturized and then wrap it in some cling wrap or plastic wrap and just sit like that. Don't do anything. Relax for 10 minutes. And I think it should help soften your hands and smooth it out. Um, 
those are some things that I can suggest to you. I hope they work out and I hope you give them a try. Uh, let's take one more question. So this one is from YouTube. She says, I'm cushy and I want to ask what routine I should follow at home because I have extremely dry skin and it irritates her a lot. So for dry skin, opposite of oily skin, you want to make sure that you're getting very nourishing, hydrating products. Never go for something that's oil free or gel based. You want it to be a cream based product. Um, so when you're looking for face washes, look for a face wash that when you squeeze out, it's white and creamy in color and is kind of thicker. You don't want something that's a gel or foaming face wash because what that's going to do is completely dry out your skin. So <clears throat> you can try out the Cetaphil uh, face wash that I suggested earlier. You can also try out a Biotic Honey Nectar face wash. It's supposed to be really, really great for dry skin. So you can try that one out as well. Um, and then for toners, again, you want to look for a creamy toner. You don't want a toner that's going to dry out your skin. So I would actually, I'm going to talk about toners soon. Um, I would suggest not getting a store-bought toner and just using a very little bit of milk. Just put it in your hands or on a cotton pad and just pat it onto your face and allow your face to absorb it in. You can also try using uh, rose water as a toner. Again, it's going to hydrate your skin and close your pores without drying your skin out. And finally, for a moisturizer, like I said, you definitely want to avoid light gel-based moisturizers. You want to go for something that's thick, creamy, oil-based, something like that. So again, uh, Cetaphil is great for dry skin. They have um, a moisturizer that's good for your face and your body. And it's very gentle. It's, again, dermat tested. So you can give that one a try. And hopefully these work out for you and you find your skin kind of getting rejuvenated a bit. So we'll take uh, one more question and then I'll talk about toners. Um, so this question is from Amisha Pradhan and she says, can charcoal detoxify skin? That's a really great question. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure about the science behind all this, but charcoal activated charcoal is known to detoxify skin, not just skin, but people put activated charcoal in water bottles as well to purify it. And again, I don't know the science behind it, but it, what it does is it kind of sucks away all the impurities and um, absorbs it, whether from water or from your face. So um, that's why there's so many products out there that are charcoal based. Um, the best way that you can use charcoal that I would suggest is to mix it into a, a face mask. Again, we have um, a really great charcoal clay face mask that you can try out. We'll make sure that the video gets shared with you. Um, but if you're just off the top of my head, it's a just a tiny half teaspoon of charcoal mixed with one spoon of multani mitti or any kind of clay and a little bit of water and a little bit of aloe vera gel. If you just mix that together into a paste and apply it onto your face for about 10 to 15 minutes, let it dry and then you can wash it off. It should be amazing for your skin because you'll get the benefits of both clay and the charcoal together. Um, so it should leave you with really clean feeling, um, um, fresh feeling skin. So I hope that helps. Um, so now I'm going to talk about toners as our next DIY um, skincare product. And again, we have quite a few options for toners. So I have a few here. One of them is what I was talking about earlier, which is green tea. Um, so all you need to do with these green tea bags, if you have green tea at home, is soak it in some hot water. Maybe I would say soak two in a cup of hot water so you're really getting the most out of it. Um, let the water cool down. And you can put it into like a little spray bottle, something like this, and use it as your daily toner. It's great for normal or combination skin. Um, either spray it directly onto your face or you can apply it with a cotton pad again. And like I said, we're sure all of you have at least one of these things at home. So green tea is just one type of toner that you can use. There are quite a few more. If you have normal to dry skin, you can try using rose water as a toner 
or milk as a toner as well, which is something I suggested earlier. All of these things are going to balance the pH level of your skin and kind of shrink your pores a little and they're going to get rid of the little extra bit of dirt or impurities that are left on your skin after cleansing or exfoliating. Um, and they're going to make you feel really fresh and they're going to prevent acne as well. So it does all of these amazing things. And I know not a lot of people use toner, but it's definitely something you should try, especially if you can do it with just one of these ingredients and it's really easy to do. Um, again, so like I said, milk or rose water if you have normal to dry skin. And if you have oily or acne prone skin, you can use apple cider vinegar mixed with a little bit of water. Same thing, you can spray it onto your face with a spray bottle or apply it with a cotton pad or just take it in your hands and directly rub it onto your face. So those are a few options for toners that you can try. Um, we have one more product to talk about, which will be moisturizers, but I'll take a few more questions before um, I get into moisturizers. So we'll take another question. Um, this question is from Srushti Talathi on YouTube, and she says, uh, what are the best vitamin C products? So I have only actually used uh, maybe two different vitamin C products. Um, and they were from Body Shop, the vitamin C serum. And St. Botanica has a vitamin C face wash, I believe. Both of those are great. Um, they are a little bit on the pricey side. Unfortunately, for some reason, vitamin C products, uh, vitamin C based skincare are pretty expensive and not that um, affordable to find but they do last for a very long time and they're all um, great for your skin they do a lot of great things so you can try out one of those um or if you want to go for a diy once in a while you can mix some orange peel powder with some yogurt and apply it as a face mask um if you can't buy orange peel powder it's really easy to make it we did it for one of our videos you just take an orange peel put it in the microwave for about one to two minutes till it's hard. You'll be able to feel like it's rock solid and you can just crush it in a mixie, in a grinder till it's a powder form, mix it with some yogurt and you'll be getting the benefits of the vitamin C from the orange peel uh, mixed with the yogurt on your face. So if you're looking for a DIY, that one will work for you as well. Um, let's see what other questions we're getting in. So this one is from Facebook and she says, hi, I have extremely dehydrated, dry, flaky skin and she's getting wrinkles. So this is pretty common for someone who has dry skin. Unfortunately, you're likely to age a little bit faster. You're likely to have wrinkles come on a little bit sooner, um, which is why we suggest that you start using anti-aging products from the age of 25 because that's when the first signs of aging start to show. Um, so... For this, something that you can try is first get a great moisturizer that's anti-aging and really hydrating. Uh, one of our favorites is the Garnier Anti-Aging Wrinkle Lift Cream. Um, it's a nice thick cream. It's really moisturizing and it has anti-aging properties as well. I believe it has ginger extracts in it which help reduce the signs of wrinkles. Um, and then you can also use face masks that contain bananas or yogurt and honey because all of these things are going to hydrate your skin and honey. I don't know. Um, we've talked about this pretty often. Um, I have some here. Uh, what honey does is it pulls the moisture from the environment into your skin. So it's going to absorb moisture from the air and kind of put it on your skin and let your skin absorb it as well. So it's a really great nourishing product if you have dry skin. Um, and then finally, you should also be exfoliating once a week to get rid of the dry flakiness. So you want to exfoliate to get rid of it and then use hydrating products to replenish the moisture and nourish your skin again. So let's take one more question. Um, so this one is from Lakshmi Durai on YouTube and she said, what are natural ingredients for pimples? Um, again, we have a video um, all about acne spot treatment that we'll share with you. But um, some things that I can think of right now, there are some uh, natural ingredients for acne that might irritate your skin or burn your skin. So you want to be really careful while trying them out. But 
if they do work for you they're gonna help dry out that pimple really well so um you will get the best benefits out of it and some of these are tea tree oil um lemon garlic uh the only thing is when you're using any of these you want to mix it with a hydrating product so your skin doesn't get too dried out so with tea tree oil you can mix it with some aloe vera gel um with garlic you can mix it with some honey or with some rose water and you can give these a try but i recommend not applying them all over your face just put it on the spots where you have acne um because if you apply it all over your face it will dry out those other areas that don't have any pimples on them so i hope that answers your question um so now i want to talk about the last product that you can make at home with home uh, ingredients that you have in your kitchen and that is a moisturizer so um i have a few different things here as well for moisturizers the first one is aloe vera gel um this is for someone who has oily to combination skin you don't need much of this at all it's basically one of the best natural gel moisturizers all you have to do is take a little bit pat it into your skin you don't want to rub you want to just kind of tap it into your skin so your skin gets to absorb it if you rub most of it will get absorbed into your hands so just put a little bit on your face let it get absorbed and it's not going to make you break out it's going to be really gentle on your skin and it's not going to make you oily either so this is great for people with oily skin if you're someone who has an aloe vera plant at home and you're removing the gel directly from the plant there's something i just wanted to mention um when you cut the plant open sometimes you get some yellow sap that comes out of the sides of the leaves this is actually latex and a lot of people say sometimes when they use natural aloe vera gel from the plant directly they tend to break out this is because sometimes the latex gets mixed in with the gel and gets on your skin and latex is like a plasticky rubbery product it's what gloves are made of you don't really want it on your skin as a skin care product so if you are removing it directly from a plant you want to make sure to just gently scoop out only the gel and don't get any of this yellow sap latex in it because it will probably make you break out and it will clog your pores so that was for people with oily or combination skin and for other people who have dry skin you can just go directly with any oil um and apply it to your skin as a moisturizer you really really don't need a lot of this i think uh when we tell people you can use an oil as a moisturizer they pour a lot into their hands and kind of rub it into their face like as if you're massaging your skin it's not that at all you just want a few drops of it almost like you're applying a face serum just enough to hydrate your skin but not to make it greasy or clog your pores so you can try again olive oil um as a moisturizer for dry skin or jojoba oil and you can try coconut oil but like i said earlier we suggest that people don't use it on their face unless you know 100% it's not going to clog your pores and break you out because coconut oil is one of the most comedogenic oils which means that it's most likely to clog your pores and cause acne in the future so it's best to stay away from it unless you've used it before and you know that your skin accepts it and you're one of those lucky people um so those were all the diy skin care products that i wanted to talk about we'll answer a few more questions before we end with today's show um let's see so this question is from ananya don on youtube who says what to do with facial hair this is a great question especially right now um during the lockdown everyone's at home um a lot of women don't have their facial hair groomed and i think a lot of people are starting to wonder what to do and how to do it um we are working on some videos for you on how to groom your facial hair during the lockdown um i believe mohana did a live on it recently on how to um pluck your eyebrows and shape your eyebrows but a few things i can suggest to you is one if you have a tweezer you can definitely try plucking if you're going to pluck your eyebrows what you want to do is make sure you fill it out as if you would when you were putting on makeup and only pluck what goes under your eyebrow and above it you don't want to go too much into your actual thick eyebrow 
because you might risk over tweezing it and then you'll be left with really really thin eyebrows and you'll have to spend time filling it out again so be pretty careful with it and only pluck what you see underneath underneath here um another thing you can try is using a facial razor razor um i personally not used one before um i'm a little bit afraid of shaving uh using a razor on my face in case i cut myself um but it is a great option that a lot of people use for both their upper lips and uh eyebrows and also if you have any stray hair around your jawline you can try it out um these are both pretty easily av available from chemist tweezers and um facial razors even during the lockdown so you can give those a try and we'll work on putting out some videos for you instructing you on how is the best way to get rid of facial hair right now um so let's take another question so this one is from ritu mohata who says uh she wants a face wash moisturizer and body lotion for sensitive skin so i think i said this earlier but sensitive skin uh your best best bet is cetaphil um it's going to be the most amazing product you've ever tried it's not going to cause any inflammation any rashes um or any breakouts as well uh and like i said they have a face wash that you can use it's the daily cleanser i think and they have a moisturizer that's great for both your um face and your body as well i have it somewhere around me in this room but i'm not sure where so i i won't grab it and show you what it looks like right now but it comes in a little tube and you can use it on your face and body so it gets over quickly cuz i feel like i'm using it all the time on my knees and elbows and dry spots on my body as well um so you can definitely give those products a try so i think we'll take one more question before we end with today's show uh this one is from tanya on youtube who said how to get rid of tiny forehead bumps so this is difficult for us to answer if we can't see you obviously cuz these bumps could be anything um I would say your best bet is exfoliation. Obviously, you should definitely speak to a dermat and get their opinion on it. Um you can try exfoliating. What these might be are um something called melia and melia is actually like I think it's tiny tiny little uh deposits of keratin on your skin. So your skin naturally forms keratin and you have some small deposits of it. I tend to get a few around my under eyes here. and on the sides of my nose uh they usually go away with time so i wouldn't suggest any harsh treatments or anything i would say definitely speak to a dermat and you can try with some gentle exfoliation for the time being and see if that helps them go away a little bit quicker um so i think that was all the questions we can take for today if i wasn't able to answer your question i'm really really sorry um As you guys know, we get hundreds of questions during these live shows, and it's just not possible for us to answer all of them. Um, but we love hearing from you, and we do love answering these. So make sure to join us for our next live show. Um, tomorrow we're actually going to be going live with a nutritionist called Neha Ranglani, and she's going to be helping you with some immunity boosting foods, um, which, as we all know, is so so important at a time like this. when our immunity is something that's very very important and preventing us from falling sick so we hope you join us for that and we'll be able to answer some more of your questions um and i hope you enjoyed hearing about these diy skincare products that you can make very easily from uh ingredients that you have in your kitchen so uh thank you guys for joining us and until next time stay tuned and stay glamorous <laughs>